show for you tonight for two reasons. First, we have with us one half of the lovable odd couple, Mr. Tony Randall. Thank you. And second, the only man to have six wives on television, the gentleman who did such a superb job portraying Henry VIII, Mr. Keith Michel. Oh, my God. <laughs> we've, had, we've had marvelous fun rehearsing the show this week. Yes, we have a witty bit of Noel Coward for you. It's very chic. Some Broadway roles we've always wanted to play. Mm -hmm. Very grand indeed. And a little bit of the old English musical. I say, I say, I say. <laughs> The word versatility has been applied to many performers, but if there is one actor today who really deserves that Julie, no, 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 it, please, it, please, no, no. I appreciate what you're saying. I heard your introduction, mm -hmm. but modesty demands that I stop you in these accolades. Oh, yes, but Tony... No, 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 really. I, but despite the fact that I do sing and dance and do drama, I just feel that I'm not one for tooting my own horn, well, and it's not right. Well, I'm glad of that, Tony. You see, I was speaking of Keith Michel. <laughs> Keith Michel. Yes, it, it isn't that you're not versatile, Tony. It's just that, well, few actors have the dramatic ability plus the musical range that Keith has. Well, I noticed that modesty hasn't stopped him from interrupting you. Oh. Well, continue your chauvinistic tribute to your fellow finisher. <laughs> well, now, critics on both sides of the Atlantic agree that his Don Quixote and Man of La Mancha was one of the highlights of recent seasons. Yes, yes. Oh, I'll, I'll give him that. <laughs> the fact is... In all seriousness now, stopping the kidding around, mm. I'd, I'd love to play Sancho opposite him. Wouldn't that have been a strange pairing, Tony? Yes. We'd make an odd couple. Oh, no. come on. Every little bit helps. Oh, oh come on. Show business, you've got to plug your own thing. I understand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Keith Michel.
fantastic, you. fantastic. I really mean it. Oh, you, sir. You did it, sir. Absolutely to a turn. No, no, there was one thing, no, no. I do think I could have done it a little bit. I was born to play that part. I was. Tony is just like every actor I've ever known, oh. Keith. We see a show and we always say, don't we, I'd love to have played that part. Well, oh, well, I know the feeling. Yes. I would have made, I think, the perfect Petruccio. Petruccio? Petruccio. I Petruccio. don't think it matters. Petruccio. It's Petruccio. late Kiss me, Kate. Yes, yes, yes I know who that's you That's my mean. part. You know, yes. I would have given my eye teeth to play Maine. Uh, I wish I'd had a shot at Fagan in Oliver. Um, Gosh. Uh, yes. You know, we could wish all night. Why not do it? I mean, here we are, and you're my guest. Let's indulge ourselves yes. and have an orgy of song and dance. Ladies and gentlemen, roll. We have always wanted... To play. Uh, but first, a role our sponsor has always wanted to play. Do you mind? <laughs> Let us drink, leave him mine in the moonlight benign to the joy of our dream come true. Today she likes me, ha, and tomorrow, tomorrow, ah, my teeth ache from the urge to touch her. I'm speechless, for I mustn't tell her. It's wrong now, but it won't be long now before my love discovers that she and I are lovers. Imagine how surprised she's bound to be. She loves me. Doesn't show it. How 
could she? But she doesn't even know it. Yesterday she loathed me. Ah, now today I like him. Ah, and tomorrow, tomorrow. tomorrow. Man's got a heart, 
hasn't he? Uh, Joking apart, hasn't he? And though I'd be the first one to say that I wasn't the saint, I'm finding it hard to be really as black as they think. I'm reviewing the situation. Can a fellow be a villain all his life? All the trials and tribulations Better settle down and get myself a wife And a wife will cook and sew for me And come for me and go for me and go for me And nag at me the fingers she will nag at me The money she will take from me A misery she'll make for me I think I better think it out again What happens when I'm 70? Hmm? Must come a time when you're old and it's cold and who cares if you live or you die Your one consolation you may have put by I give you the situation I'm a bad and I shall stay You'll be seeing No transformation But it's wrong to be a rogue in every way I don't want nobody hurt for me Or made to do the dirt for me This rotten life is not for me It's getting far too hot for me Don't want no one to rob for me But who will find a job for me I don't care what they've got for me But who will change the plot for me I think I better think it out again
second half of the Julie Andrews Hour, which will continue following station identification. in love with Pamela Winkle. Oh, dear. Well, I shall simply have to have lots and lots of champagne and uh, kick her in the knickers, don't you? <laughs> well, I'm off to join the Bengal Lawns. <laughs> what is love if you can't play the piano? This <laughs> everybody. I have something to tell you. While I was away, I went to a marvelous party with Nunu and Nada and Nell. You know, it was in the fresh air, and we went as we were, and we stayed as we were, which was hell. Poor Beryl started singing at midnight, and she didn't stop singing till four. <laughs> well, we knew the excitement was bound to begin when Laura got blind on Dubonnet and gin, and she scratched her the mirror with a Cartier pin I couldn't have liked it. <laughs> a marvelous party. Oh. I must say the fun was intense. Mm. We all had to do what the people we knew might be doing a hundred years hence. <laughs> Growing old gracefully. And Elsie, who's 74, said A, it's a question of being sincere. And B, if you're supple, you've nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. And she hung upside down from a glass chandelier. <laughs> a marvelous party. Oh. We played a most wonderful game. Maureen disappeared and came back in a beard. And we all had to guess at her name. <laughs> Poor Frieda arrived with a turtle which shattered us all to the core. The Duchess passed out at a quarter to three. Then Cyril suddenly cried, Piddle Eddie. He ripped up his trousers and jumped in the sea. <laughs> Is that the Grand Duchess all lying on the piano? Hmm. Oh, yes, I think it is. <laughs> Wonderful parties Lady Bablis gives, doesn't she? Entrancing, such a dear old lady. Mm -hmm. And so gay. Did you notice her at supper blowing all those shrimp through her ear trumpet? Yes. Come on, darling, let's see.
have you heard about Muriel? You know, she's taken up with the strangest chap. He has a most unusual fetish. Really? Yes. He collects galoshes. And what's so strange about that? Oh, my dear, he lives in the desert. Oh, I met him at a party just a couple of years ago. He was rather over hearty and ridiculous. But since I'd seen him on the screen, he wove a certain spell. And like a silly <laughs> I know it's stupid to be mad about the boy. Try a cold shower. <laughs> I'm so ashamed of it, but must admit the sleepless nights I've had about the boy. Why don't you take night off? <laughs> Will it ever cloy? This odd diversity of misery and joy. That's very good. Did I write this? <laughs> I'm feeling quite insane and young again. And all because I'm mad about the boy. We're going to have to put you in a home. <laughs> She's hardly sentimental. Love is so sublime. Mm. She has to pay the rental, and she can't afford to waste much time. Oh, good. If she could employ a little magic that would finally destroy this dream that paints her and enchains her. But I can't, because I... not going to Devonshire this year. Well, you didn't go last year. And I'm not going this year. Since the elephant died, there's no sense in going anywhere. call someone who's afraid of Christmas. What? A Noel coward. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Freddie. Isn't Lady Teasdale a dreary, dreary person? Oh, very. And Lord Teasdale is a bore, a dreadful bore. Quite. We must visit them again soon. A really good, dreadful, boring time is hard to come by. Mm. I think you need. Do you know, 
If I had my house to do over again, I think I should put in a moat. Good idea. Don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. The profession is overcrowded and the struggle's pretty tough. And admitting the fact she's burning to act, that isn't quite enough. enough. She has nice hands to give the wretched girl a due. But don't you think her bust is too developed for her age? I repeat, Mrs. Worthington. Sweet Mrs. Worthington. Don't, don't put your daughter on the stage. On the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. She's a bit of an ugly duckling, you must honestly confess. And the width of a seat would surely defeat her chances of success. It's a loud voice, and though it's not exactly flat, she'll need a little more than that to earn a living wage. On our knees, Mrs. Worthington. Please, Mrs. Worthington, don't put the daughter on the stage. Dears, can't you ever stop talking about the theatre? That's all you ever go on about. Do something else to amuse me. I'm bored. Huh? <laughs> Senorita Nina from Argentina knew all the answers, although her relatives and friends were perfect dancers. She swore she'd never answer a step until she died. She said, I've seen too many movies, and all they prove is too idiotic. They all insist that South America's exotic, whereas it couldn't be more boring if it tried. She said that, frankly, she was blinded to all their over-advertised romantic charms. And then she got more bloody-minded and told them where to put their tropic house. She said, I hate to be pedantic, but I'm driven nearly frantic when I see that unromantic, scantic lot of stuff. It drives me absolutely nuts. She declined to dig in the green for the disaster too. And in language profane of sea, she cursed the little water too. She cursed the whole water too. In her demeanor grew so offensive that when the hatred of her friends grew too intensive, she thought she'd better beat it while she had the chance. After some trial and tribulation, she reached the station and met a sailor who had acquired a wooden leg in Venezuela. And so she married him because he couldn't bear. Puppy is a dizzy little thing, isn't she? Oh! Oh, oh Huffy. I'm getting terribly sorry. Mm. I say, did you hear that Cynthia has taken up with a Frenchie? Oh, and speak. Oh, exactly. Then she can't speak a word. Oh, you're so dizzy. Mm, dizzy. They all think of me as dizzy. The perfect twit to invite to a party. Oh. Poor little rich girl. You're a bewitched girl, better beware. Laughing at danger, virtuous stranger, better take care. The life you lead sets all your nerves a jangle. Your love affairs are in a hopeless tangle. Though you're a child, dear, your life's a wild time. In lives of pleasure, the craze for pleasure steadily grows. Cocktails and laughter, but what comes after, nobody knows. You're weaving love into a mad death pattern, ruled by Pantaloon. <laughs> Poor little rich girl, don't drop a stitch. La, 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 
to do some of my well-known impressions for you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Please save your applause until the end. <laughs> Seriously, folks, I was in Hollywood, USA not too long ago, and I was standing at the corner of the famous Hollywood and Vine, when who shall I see crossing the street but that well-known crooner, Mr. Bing Crosby. <laughs> when the blue of the night, ba, 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 ba. it's the goal of the day, ba, 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 ba. someone waits for me, ba, 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 ba. say, say, did you read where they're going to hold the next Olympic ski jump on Bob Hope's nose? <laughs> well, so much for being proud. And now who should come walking down the street but the late, great, W.C. Fields, and I shouted at him, I shout, hi there, W.C., and he says to me, <laughs> suffering sciatica, <laughs> my little chickadee, yes. When they asked me how I'd like children, I said, parboiled or fried. <laughs> Still, yes, I'm glad you liked it. But enough of me. I've always believed in leaving them wanting more. Yes, I really have. So right now, it's my great pleasure to present the biggest trio in the business. It's the biggest because there are four of them. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome out, please, the four sides. <laughs> Thank you. 
my sorry, love. Alfie, yesterday you had a chip on your shoulder. That's right. My wife broke a chair over me head. Oh, I Are you going to go on wearing that old rabbit fur coat all your life? Why not? The rabbits do. Oh. <laughs> and now, my friends, if we may dispense with levity and hilarity for a few minutes, it is my pleasure to bring you direct from Tuppence on the Thames at very great expense, Britain's celebrated pair of identical twins. Yes, raising their voices in glorious song of romance and fidelity. Here they are, the Bloomer Twins. Just a song at twilight When the Such lovely twins, yes. I don't know how you can tell them apart, except off stage, the big one wears glasses. Hey, 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 Auntie, Auntie, do you know how to make antifreeze? No, no, no. Tell me, how do you make antifreeze? To. Where's this old world going to? With its bustling, hustling, up-to-date ways. Each invention brings a change, something new and something strange. But the greatest puzzles are the girls of nowadays. Oh, the way they're dressing, the things they do, keeps me guessing. I'm telling you, there's a trick in picking a chick 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 today. I can't tell them apart, can you? There's a trick in picking a chick 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 today. Some girls in shows, and all that you know, are on their toes, just like I figured a way to take 20 strokes off your golf game. And how do you take 20 strokes on your golf game? Golf game? Don't play the last stone. Oh, no. I say, I say, I say. Well, it's intermission time at the old music hall, ladies and gentlemen. So just relax while our sponsors walk among you for one minute. Yeah. <laughs> Person, he really was. Well, I 
Ladies and gentlemen, good night. For the Julie Andrews Hour, this is Dick Cooper. Follow the flight of Apollo 17 and news from around the world every weekend on the ABC Evening News with Howard Chase, Nick, and Harry Reason. Tuesday, see the drama of two young people fighting to survive, and if you give a dance, you've got to pay the band on the ABC Theater.